All right, so we're going to write um, some more hybridized orbitals, and we're going to look at the molecule PI5, phosphorus penta iodide. And the first thing we want to do is draw the Vesper for PI5. So um, we know that phosphorus is going to go in the middle. This is going to have five electron groups. So we're going to have one of our iodines directly above, one directly below, one directly at 90 degrees, and then we're going to have an iodine going back and then we're going to have our wedge coming out. Okay, and then we can see that we have our triangle here in one plane. So this is going to be trigonal bipyramidal. This angle right here is going to be 90 degrees. And that, that's going to be our axial. And then our equatorial is going to be 120 degrees all three of those equatorial angles. Okay, so let's draw the energy diagram for this, for the hybridization. So phosphorus, we know has some three S electrons. We're gonna draw those, and then it's got one, two, three, three P electrons, so it's got five valence electrons. Well, in order for us to get five bonds with iodine, in order to have that sharing, we cannot use this configuration. So what's going to happen is one of these S electrons, this one right here, is going to get promoted up to the 3D. So the 3D is there, it's available, it's just empty, but we're going to promote one electron from phosphorus up to the 3D. So then what we're going to have in our excited state, so we're going to put P with a star here, P over here as our ground state, we now have only one of the three S's, three on the three P, and then one on the three D. So now we have five electrons that are unpaired that we can share with. But we're still not ready to bond because all of these iodines, all the bonds are the same. So now we need to hybridize. I'm going to draw a circle around all of the electrons that are going to be hybridized. So sometimes it won't be all of them. This time it is. And when I hybridize, I'm going to be in between the 3D and 3P. I should have labeled this 3P and this 3S. So we're going to hybridize, we're going to be in the middle. We don't need to draw boxes, but we need to be in the correct level for five. And then I'm going to have my five electrons. And this is an important part right here. What are we going to call that orbital? Well, I have an S, I've got a P, I've got three of them. So there's my three P's and a D. So this orbital made up of S, P, and D is now called SP3D. And that shape is associated with trigonal bipyramidal. 
anytime we have that hybridization, we're going to have tri trigonal bipyramidal. Now, what I want to show up here is iodine coming in and how it bonds. Now, there's five iodines, so I'm, going to, I'm only going to show one, I times five, because it would get pretty crowded. Iodine, as you know, has five, one, two, three, four, five, uh, five P electrons. It's got seven valence electrons. We're not going to show the S. All we're concerned about is showing the bonding. So we're going to, we're going to show that this right here is going to be shared here, 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 and here. So that's the five. Okay, so that would happen with five different iodines. We're only going to show the one because, again, it would just get too crowded. Okay, now we're ready to draw the contour diagram. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to put our phosphorus in the middle and I'm just going to draw a line straight up, straight down, straight out, and then I'm going to draw a couple of them here like this at an angle. These are just going to be my reference lines for my orbitals. All right, then I'm going to draw five of my orbitals. Do you remember what these are called? These are called SP3D. That has to add up to five. An S, three Ps, and a D adds up to five. So those are going to be labeled SP3D. We're going to label all of them. And then we need to show that we have a pair of electrons. And now we need to draw our iodines. Okay, so we're going to show only one of the p orbitals of iodine. Again, if we look up here, that's a 3P. I'm sorry, a 5P, not a 3P. Iodine is 5P. So we're going to keep drawing those. And they're fairly large. So if we were drawing fluorine, we would draw these P orbitals much smaller. Again, we're not showing all three of the 5p orbitals, we are only showing the one in which there is bonding. And I'm going to show them from five different iodines. Okay, then we're going to label the angles. That's 90 degrees, that's axial. And then around the equator, it's 120 degrees. We want to make sure we label the shape. Trigonal bipyramidal. All right, now we want to label all of our iodines which would be at this location, I. So we want to label all those. Remember the nucleus would be in the center there. And we want to label these as 5P because they are 5P orbitals of those five different iodines. And that's it.